Right, Manushi, are we are we waiting a minute or two? I said it's still, it's still actually a minute early, isn't it? So I think we should wait. Yeah, for a minute or two. Okay. Yes, uh, let's give it a minute or two. Praveen really needs some water. <laughs> yeah, maybe quickly. Uh, are we live? We are. But, okay. Uh, and are we recording this session? So. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Abhishek. Uh, so should we start? I'll start and then others can join as we get going. Yeah. Sure. Okay, hey. um, right. thank you to everybody who's joined our webinar on uh, prioritizing workforce for comprehensive primary health care. Um, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our funders, uh, the Primary Healthcare Performance Initiative, who have made this webinar possible. Um, some housekeeping announcements, please share your questions through the Q&A box. Uh, relevant recordings and materials will be shared after the event, and uh, we are actively we are actively engaging in a constructive conversation on evidence based primary healthcare. So you can join us with hashtag Stronger with PHC, evidence based PHC, and healthcare workforce. Our Twitter handle is care underscore PHC, PHCRC. Um, with that, I would like to introduce our moderator for the day, Dr. Bob Mash, who is the chair of the steering committee of the uh, Primary Healthcare Research Consortium. He's a professor of family medicine and primary care at the Stellenbosch University and helped establish the discipline of family medicine in South Africa. Um, Bob has committed to the development of community-oriented primary, uh, primary care and uh, district level uh, health services in the region. With that, over to Bob. Okay, thank you, Manushi, and welcome to this um, webinar. So um, as you heard, the webinar is um, offered by the Primary Healthcare Research Consortium. And in essence, what we're doing is we're presenting the, the findings of one of the research studies that was done by the consortium over the last uh, two or three years. Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, and I think what's interesting about this is, well, first of all, it's done in three very diverse countries. So we've got uh, India, Mexico, and Uganda, um, who are all actually done very similar work, and we can compare their findings, and we will do that just now. But I think the central question, the central, the core question was, we are all wanting to deliver comprehensive primary health care, uh, but what sort of workforce, what kind of um, a sort of multidisciplinary team in primary health care is needed to deliver on that um, goal of comprehensive primary health care. I think that was the core, the core question really that the research was, was asking. Um, and uh, I, I see uh, the actual question was, how does the health workforce deliver comprehensive primary health care in these three countries? And what are the enablers, barriers, and potential solutions to strengthening the health workforce. So a very relevant question and, and very interesting to be able to look at it in these different um, countries from very, very different continents. So that is what we're gonna do. And I think I'm gonna hand over to um, Praveen, um, who um, is going to sort of give an overview of the research before the different countries present their findings. Um, and maybe I guess I should interview Praveen. Oh, there he is, Praveen Devasetti, um, who, who is the program director at the George Institute for Global Health in India, 
uh, for primary health care. And he's also been sort of the, at the core of coordinating and organizing the, the primary health care research consortium. Um, and I think you can you can see everything else. But yeah, he, he, I, I, I know he's been very involved in these in M health, E health primary health care programs in India, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Thailand. It was a topic for another webinar, uh, Praveen. Um, so over to you. Tell us about this research project and what it was all about. So sure, thanks, Bob, uh, for that introduction. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So so this study, uh, as Bob said, we were trying to look at uh, you know how diverse were the low and middle income countries in terms of primary healthcare team integration and comprehensive primary healthcare. So this is a mixed method study that was uh, that was done in these three countries: India, Mexico, and Uganda. And in terms of a brief back background, we all know primary healthcare in many uh, low and middle income countries is fragmented, uh, selectively disease oriented and under resourced with uh, suboptimal performance. Appropriate high quality primary healthcare is considered as the most equitable and efficient way to enhance the health of the populations. Uh, but a high quality primary healthcare is considered as people centered, accessible, coordinated, comprehensive and continuous. So the delivery of uh, high quality primary health care is dependent on many factors. And one of them is the availability of adequately skilled and motivated primary health care workforce. And of course, the way in which this workforce function as collaborative teams. While there is a body of research uh, on primary health care systems, recent reviews have uh, indicated knowledge gaps uh, on effective primary health care team organization and their service delivery. So in particular, given uh, variability in the health system context, there was a need to investigate how these different LMICs organize and integrate their PHC teams to deliver comprehensive care. So here, uh, comprehensiveness is, uh, uh, is sort of uh, uh, defined uh, as per Barbara Starfield's definition, which refers to the provision of holistic and appropriate care across a broad spectrum of health conditions across the lifespan and treatment modalities. So next slide, please. With this uh, background, uh, the PSE uh, Research Consortium commissioned researchers from India, Mexico, and Uganda to study the primary healthcare team organization and delivery of CPHC services. And this slide shows the diverse context in these three countries uh, you know, from uh, different continents. So uh, in terms of organization, India has a three-tied health system. The sub-center is at the community level. Uh, there is a PHC, which is the first contact with the doctor, a community health center, and a tertiary health center. In Mexico, they follow the similar three-level public health system in health districts, uh, which has a community health center, an integrated community health center with the doctors and other uh, service providers, a secondary level, and a tertiary level in hospitals of high specialties. And then in Uganda, we have a unique five-level system with uh, health center one, which is at the community level, and the general hospital, which is uh, the, the fifth level, being the apex of the three uh, PHC systems. All these functions within uh, the health sub-district administrative system in Uganda. Next slide, please. And this slide uh, shows uh, the status of uh, the comprehensive primary health care in these countries. And as you all might know, in India, uh, with the announcement of the Ayushman Bharat more recently, the health and wellness centers uh, aims to provide CPHC by upgrading and making 150,000 existing sub-centers and primary health centers functional uh, by December 2022. In Mexico, there was a new national health plan uh, in 2018-2024, which uh, was to create uh, the Health Institute of Welfare called as INSABI uh, uh, within the Mexican health system. And this aims to provide comprehensive primary health care by organizing the health districts based on geographical areas by 2024. And in Uganda, they follow the Ugandan uh, National Minimum Healthcare Package, which comprises of interventions that address major causes of mor morbidity and mortality, both communicable and non-communicable, including disease prevention and health promotion. So next slide, yeah. So the aim of uh, this research uh, is to investigate the relationship between differing different ways of uh, organizing the PHC workforce and the delivery of comprehensive primary healthcare in three diverse LMICs. In specific, we are looking uh, at these objectives. One is to review the national and subnational policies on PHC team composition and organization and the expected comprehensiveness of the PHC service delivery. 
we plan to uh, we we had an objective to describe the actual composition and organization of the phc teams in the sampled health services and assess the comprehensiveness of care provided by these teams uh, using their definition of comprehensiveness we used uh, the phcpi uh, conceptual framework uh, to synthesize uh, the study findings with a specific focus on governance and leadership and health financing from the systems domain uh, workforce facility organization management and availability of effective phc services from the service delivery domain high quality phc from uh, uh, and effective service coverage from uh, the outputs domain yeah thanks manasi so this study uh, followed a parallel mixed methods study design which uh, sort of combines the qualitative and quantitative data in each country and supports cross country comparisons we have uh, as first component a policy review which consisted of a desktop review of primary healthcare workforce policies in order to understand uh, the policy and the organized organizational context in which the phc is structured organized and delivered there is a quantitative component where we use the who sara tool uh, to go and collect information about availability of primary health care workforce the infrastructure and the range of services that were available and provided at the phc level and it, this study had a, a qualitative component to understand the perspectives of primary health care stakeholders to interviews about the composition and organization of phc teams and to what extent did they feel that comprehensive services was delivered with this background and general methodology my colleagues and collaborators uh, will talk about the specific findings in each of these countries over to bob uh bob you're muted well done <laughs> thanks praveen uh, so we're now going to move on to hear from one of the countries the first country as you can see that's up is india uh, and Renu John is going to uh, tell us about the findings there. I uh, just want to remind you, as you're listening to Renu, um, you can put any questions, because at the end of her 10-minute uh, talk, we're going to have a space for questions and answers. So as you're listening, uh, put your questions in the, in the Q&A uh, box. Um, so now, actually, interestingly, Renu is a dentist. I didn't know this, um, but, <laughs> but she... She has a master's, as you can see, in public health um, and is a research fellow at the George Institute. Um, and it seems like she's definitely moved on from dentistry to a much broader um, interest in the health system. Um, and as you can see, she's particularly looking at challenges faced by community health workers uh, and, and how, the, how the digital solutions can help them. That's also another, we're gonna have another webinar on this, Praveen, because that's very, these are very interesting topics. Um, but in this case, she's been um, uh, leading this particular piece of work in uh, in India, and she's gonna tell us what they found. So thank you, Renu, over, over to you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> yes, we will have that webinar on digital uh, systems. Okay. Uh, so, uh, hello everybody, uh, I am uh, Renu John and I am pleased to present the results from uh, India. So, we've already been briefed about the methodology of the study and the three key components of the study. So, uh, let us uh, move on to the policy, but before I can give you the key findings of the policy, uh, let me give you a brief overview of the evolution of health policy. So, which can be broadly categorized into pre Alma Ata and beyond Alma Ata declaration. So, uh, the concept of primary healthcare in India existed uh, in uh, 1946. It was introduced in the year 1946, about three decades before the Alma Ata declaration. But it was only in 1983 that we got our first national health policy. It was an ideal concept, but fell short of resources to be implemented. Then, after about two decades and uh, uh, to accommodate various changes in the health sector, we got the revised uh, national health policy in 2002. And uh, following years witnessed uh, some of the largest health reforms uh, of our country and uh, through programs like the National Rural Health Mission and Urban Health Mission. But these programs also couldn't achieve its full potential due to several systemic and structural challenges in the health system. But this led to the emergence of the national health policy in 2017, 
which laid the foundation for universal health care in India. Its flagship program was uh, later introduced in the following year called the Aishman Bharat, and this heralded the comprehensive approach the primary care system in India. So for the sake of the study, we looked at uh, policies from 1983 to 2018, its supporting documents and operational guidelines. And these are some of the key findings of policy analysis. So to give you a context, in India, the policies are made at the national level, adapted to the state level, and then implemented at the local level. So uh, the GDP, the health expenditure by the government of India on health was 1.15% of the GDP for almost a decade, from 2005 to 2014. But it was in the National Health Policy 2017 that recommended that this be revised to 2.5% of the GDP by 2025. Furthermore, it also recommended that the expenditure on health by states be revised to 8% of the GDP. And to translate this into action, uh, the National Health Policy had its flagship program called the Aishman Bharat launched in 2000. So this program is touted to be uh, the world's largest uh, government health scheme. It had two uh, main pillars. One was to deliver comprehensive primary health care through the establishment of health and wellness centers. The figure that you see in the slide is the guiding, uh, the guiding principles for the delivery of comprehensive primary health care through the health and wellness centers in India. The second component was uh, uh, you know, provision of insurance coverage of 5 lakhs per family for almost 10 crores of, uh, of uh, poor and economically background families in the country. So these two components of the Aishman Bharat scheme was a big leap towards the universal health coverage. And moreover, uh, this transition, the journey of India from selective primary health care approach to comprehensive primary health and there was this extended uh, number of services being delivered as part of this. And because of which there was a paradigm shift from just providing quality, uh, essential health services to providing high quality primary health services. And to be able to achieve this kind of uh, the delivery of comprehensive primary health care, it envisioned intersectoral convergence at national and subnational level by incentivizing private, uh, public private partnership in the delivery. Uh, comprehensive primary health. Moreover, the policy also addressed the shortage of skilled human resources for health through several strategies like, uh, uh, you know, task sharing uh, by traditional health practitioners, uh, practitioners called the Ayush, uh, creation of an additional cadre. Uh, but there was no comprehensive national human health policy available. Moreover, no clear indication of the flow of funds towards the healthcare workforce was available. Next slide, please. So moving over to the second and the third component, the PHC facility review and the key informant reviews. These were conducted in very two diverse sections of our country, one district in the South India and one in the North India. So we randomly selected 10 PHCs from each of these districts to conduct the facility review and three PHCs from these 10 PHCs to conduct in-depth in interviews. Next slide, please. So uh, the facility review was conducted by using the WHO SARA tool. And in India, we conducted the survey at both the primary healthcare center and the sub-center because the, sub, the uh, PHC and its associated sub-centers form a PHC unit. And each one of them have this separate, uh, you know, Indian public health standards to abide by. So while analyzing the SARA result, we always refer to the IP, IPH standards that govern PHCs and sub so coming over to the results uh, of the SARA survey, some very interesting results. Uh, so at the PHC is where the medical doctor is placed and all the surveyed PHCs, at least one medical doctor or general doctor. A staff nurse was available at all the PHCs, but according to the Indian public health standard, it's essential that at least three staff nurses be available at PHC, but only 85% of the PHCs had coming to the sub-center level, 50% of the sub-centers had uh, auxiliary nurse midwife, out of which only 15% had more than one AN, uh, where uh, the Indian public health uh, standards mandate that at least two ANMs be present at the sub-center. And uh, you can also see slightly uh, slight shortfall of pharmacists and lab technicians at the PHC. 
but overall it was very good availability of community health workers at all the service centers greater than 85%. Moving over to the PHC team function, there was overall limited supervision at both the PHCs and sub centers, but when compared, PHCs fared better. Moving over to comprehensiveness of service uh, provision, here we use provision of NCD services as a proxy to measure the comprehensiveness of service provision at the facility. Here, uh, we, it was noted that the PHC had greater access to hypertension treatment algorithm and CVD management guidelines, making PHC uh, you know, better capable of providing comprehensiveness of service. But it is also to be noted that PHC is where the medical staff is uh, you know, placed, and maybe this places them at a greater advantage than the subsidies. But there are other factors that can, uh, you know, uh, uh, other factors that can that can influence the comprehensiveness of service provision. Like next slide, like the availability of basic equipment and amenities, where wherein you can see that the sub centers reported lesser availability when compared to PHCs. And coming over to PHC service availability. Again, here yeah, the PHCs fared better than the subsidies. They were able to provide better, uh, you know, services, non-communicable and uh, infectious services. But we, sh we should also note the fact that there was a stark, uh, you know, inadequate staffing at uh, the subcenter and the nurses center. So this could contribute. This could have contributed to this, uh, you know, lessened service availability at the subcenters. Next slide, please. Moving over to the facility uh, uh, key informant interviews, uh, this was conducted to understand from the PHC workforce about uh, uh, the real time, uh, you know, gaps and the barriers or the facilitators in in, in providing comprehensive primary care uh, on fee. And we interviewed several cadres, different cadres of, of uh, you know, workers from the PHC workforce. And uh, here are some of uh, the very interesting barriers which we placed under three levels, macro, meso, and the micro. So if you look at macro, while there is a very good body of, you know, accreditation for quality control, education, training, hospitals, etc., there are many inadequate resource policies for the PHC work. It's unclear career progression and career pathway between the clinical and the non-clinical staff, differential HR policies and recuperation between the permanent and the contract staff and underpaid and tight fees. All these had, uh, you know, in, has influenced both the MISO and the micro level. If you look at the MISO level, uh, while there was good improvement in the availability and coverage of services and improved NCD services at uh, the subsector, there was also shortage of basic infrastructure and MPs uh, and poor drug procurement mechanism, especially with respect to the subcenters. And yes, there were shortage of resources, especially in and ANMs, has come out through in the SARA uh, survey as well. If you go to the micro, there is a strong sense of community service and commitment to the amongst the PHC workers. And this motivation is coming from within itself and not what the system is offering them. So there's good clarity of role. Uh, there is response, there is role responsibility. And they have got this good uh, social recognition, especially after the service that they've rendered during COVID. Good teamwork practices, there is task sharing, there is task shifting. Although it is not very explicitly mentioned in the policy, the practices were existent and support supervision mostly by the medical officer who, who, who holds the entire team, the primary. Coming to the barriers at the micro level, yes, there was unclear understanding of the comprehensive primary health care. Yes, they were practicing the concepts, but were unaware of the true sense of comprehensive primary health. There was increased workload. Yes, the number of services were expanded, but there was not no compensation to make sure that the workforce will be able to manage this kind of workload. Inadequate technolo technological competence. Uh, there were lack of individual performance indicators. And because of the lack of uh, you know, inadequate human resource policies at the macro level, there was a perceived sense of unfairness by the contract employees for job security. And there was lack of knowledge regarding the promotion policies even amongst the permanent staff. And there was poor implementation of multitasking training. So Aishman Bharat, uh, I would like to conclude by saying that this program is awesome and it has the capability to you know, really transform 
the primary health care uh, system in India. But implementation is the key, and we hope to be able to uncover areas of improvement in uh, delivery competency primary health care. Thank you. Great, thanks, um, Renu. Uh, we have got a little bit of time for some questions, and I see there is one. Let's see what this says. Um, HWC SC, um, the health workforce. What what is SC again, Renu? Subcenter. Subcenter. Okay. Uh, had eighty five percent CHO availability reported low on service availability. Um, okay, so, so maybe you can translate all the abbreviations in this question, um, and it's asking you to comment on this. So um, there was 85% yeah. CHO availability, but reported low on service availability. Why is that? Uh, can, can we go back to the slides, uh, Manushi, the PHC workforce slide? Uh, no, no, PHC no. workforce slide. Yeah. It, it is not the uh, CHO, it is the staff nurse uh, at the PHC and not the community, uh, not, the, not the CHO. 85% of the PHC had more than one uh, nurse. This is at the PHC level and not at the subcenter level. Okay, so CHO, is, it, is that CHW? Is that actually what, is that the community health worker we're talking about? What is CHO? The community health officer is what she meant, but the staff community was health here. officer. Yeah. Okay. But the staff was did... here is from the PHC facility and not the health and wellness center subcenter. Okay. So a community health officer, how does that fit onto this slide? I don't see it there. Is that what yeah. is that? That's that is not, that's not part of this, but uh, an oh. MLHP at uh, the health and wellness center subcenter can also be called the community officer. And uh, between these two districts that we surveyed, uh, Rotak in Haryana and Vijayanagar in uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, MLHPs were available only at the Vijayanagar district and not uh, in Haryana. So, okay, we're pretty, pretty much out of time, but I've got one final question for you. Although I see there is something else that's popped up in the Q&A. Oh, the two other things. Um, thank you for the detailed presentation. There are a lot of similarities in the distribution of human resources within primary health care in India and Nigeria. We have found interprofessional distrust among different categories. And this seems to be more of a comment than a question. Uh, maybe you can say something about that. Did the interviews include any um, Ayush respondents? Uh, if yes, oh. what are the kinds of team experiences they reported? Okay, those are your two final questions for Okay, now. all right. <laughs> uh, I'll take this. Uh, no, we have not been able to uh, interview Ayush respondents. Uh, it was only general medical doctors that we interviewed. And uh, we interviewed the doctors, the staff nurses, multi-purpose workers, uh, and uh, the MLHPs and the ASHA workers. That's the mix, uh, skill mix that we interviewed. And yes, the kind of team experiences, yes, they, they all work great team spirit across uh, all the members of the team. But yes, uh, in especially in Vijayanagaram, where there was this uh, new cadre called the MLH introduced into the team, there was a slight uh, uh, you know, disturbance in the team dynamics. Uh, but uh, we are still exploring uh, you know, how to ice break between this uh, sudden new supervisory uh, person placed over them. Great, thank you. I'm going to move on, so you you can relax for now, uh, Renu. And we're coming to uh, Iliana Beatrice uh, Heredia. I hope I've said that right. Probably haven't. Um, but uh, Iliana, as you can see, is from Mexico. So welcome to Mexico, um, and works at the Center for Health Systems Research at the National Institute of Public Health. Uh, and is a member of this other entity with a very long name, the National System of Researchers of the Science and Technology Council of Mexico. But I think uh, you can see that she is passionate about maternal and adolescent health um, and strengthening the community workforce. 
So, Ileana, we're looking forward to hearing from you. And I know this is probably not your first language either. So, um, well done. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, good morning and good afternoon or good evening, depending on the timetable of your country. First of all, I, I like to thank the Primary Healthcare Research Consortium for the invitation to this webinar and SAMS, the Your Institute for Global Health, for uh, the financing of this study. Uh, of course, thanks to the uh, team uh, of the researchers that uh, participate in this study in Mexico. I want to um, present the result for uh, the study in Mexico. In relation of the first objectives of this study the, is that the policy review, we uh, uh, review six policy documents uh, from the period of 2019. Uh, there are two national policy reforms, the creation of Seguro Popular uh, from the 2003, in the reform of the general uh, health law, law and uh, the implementation of the INSABI in the recent uh, period, the most recent period. Four national health programs named in Mexico PROCESA by the acronym in Spanish. And uh, if I want to, to, to present uh, the timeline of the primary health care in Mexico, it's important to say that the intent to implement primary health care share model in Mexico are multiple and began in the 18th and 19th uh, with the uh, proposal of several models uh, in the, uh, to the present. All these efforts have had limitations that different uh, interpretation of the scope of primary health care, conceptual confusion about the this uh, public policy strategy and a li limited implementation and effective application did not make me possibly uh, to consolidate any of them uh, to the present. Next slide, please. Well, a uh, Mexican healthcare si system is organized around a segmented model, as uh, probably you say, no? Primary health care models are centered on a clinical approach. File and community health care and health promotion have been provided by nurses and health promoters at the community level. And uh, primary health care is not clearly included in training programs in Mexico. In uh, 2018, for example, spending on primary health care, uh, th thinking in the first level of care only, was 12.4% of the total health spending and 24.4% of the public spending on health. Next slide, please. The last uh, national health program uh, we reviewed, uh, the PROCESA 2019-2024, uh, proposed the development of, of a comprehensive strategy to guarantee the sufficient training and professionalization of the personnel. Uh, this program uh, looked for effective, universal, and free access of care. In this last period, Seguro Popular was replaced, re replaced by a policy of free health service and medicine sustained at the National Health Institute for Wellbeing. The health system in Mexico are, are, is now transitioning from the decentralized model to a centralized, uh, centralized model one. The federalization of the subnational state uh, uh, and state health service is starting right now at a, around the uh, IMSS wellbeing program. Next slide, please. Well, uh, to conduct the study, uh, the next two uh, objectives of the study, uh, that is the qual uh, quantitative approach and qualitative approach, we visit two states in Mexico, one in the western region, Guanajuato, and one in the central region, Morelos. In each state, we visit uh, a, a nine uh, health center, health, primary health uh, care facility, 
And then we apply the survey tools, uh, one per facility. And at, at, uh, in the state, in, uh, we uh, realize or conduct uh, 58 uh, semi structure interview for several key actors uh, related with primary health care. For example, uh, 15 physicians, uh, 24 nurses, a health promoter, and 11 policy makers. Next slide, Freud, please. The survey uh, in, in the facility showed that this facility uh, has uh, several uh, interesting characteristics. For example, uh, around 55% uh, of them are open only eight hours a day, and uh, around 95% uh, uh, of them offer only out patient uh, service. Uh, we found, uh, in general, a good availability of basic equipment and basic amenity, and uh, similar all primary health care uh, provide antenatal care, postnatal care service, family planning service, uh, uh, but only 16% uh, uh, of, the, of them have a labor work. Next slide, please. Uh, in order to know the composition and avail availability uh, of the primary health care team, all uh, facilities have at least one medical doctor or general doctor avail available at the at nursing staff. However, no one uh, of the health center visited has a pharmacist, and only 83% um, uh, of them did not have laboratory technicians. Only 55% uh, of the facility has the availability of community health workers. Uh, around the comprehensive of the survey provision, we found that 100% of the facility provide uh, training in diagnosis and management of cardiovascular disease, and all the primary health facility had a good availability of the diagnostic kits but only 83% conduct community activities to support hypertension care. Next slide, please. The interview uh, conducted uh, to key actors at the, uh, the state, uh, we, we can uh, found some barriers and enable uh, to provide comprehensive uh, primary health care. For example, health units with difficult accessibility for the target population, there are a good human resource planning and management policies. Uh, policies for contract uh, are differenti differentiated according to the type of human resource, for example, permanent staff versus contract staff. There, will, uh, there, there are uh, problems for human uh, availability problem of human resource, physician infrastructure, equipment, medicine, and other resources at the unit for a uh, motivated workforce uh, with uh, uh, inequitable incentive strategy. The, uh, at the micro level, for example, we found a motivated workforce, war overload, and problem in the communication and coordination difficult between uh, the primary health care team members. There are limited practice of task sharing and uh, as facilitator, uh, we found that there are clear and sustained accreditation policies, a clear goal in the performance of their function, functions, apply continuous co quality in, improving strategies, and uh, they think uh, the team are very competent. Thank you. Well done, thank you. Um, let's see, we've, yeah, good. We've got a few minutes for questions. Let's see if, um, yeah, I actually, there's a good question. And I, that's actually, this might be for you, Praveen, actually. Um, and the question is, so how was comprehensive primary healthcare defined in this study? The results seem to emphasize cardiovascular disease. Um, 
And Praveen, I think also, you know, if you remember from our previous webinar, that there's that, you know, are we talking about comprehensive primary health care in the sort of with a big C, or are we talking about comprehensive primary care, uh, you know, with a small C, as it were? And, in, and then within that, there's a question about there seems to be a bit of an emphasis on cardiovascular disease. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah. So, Oladeo, I think uh, so here we used uh, the definition of, uh, of comprehensiveness as holistic and appropriate care uh, across a broad spectrum of health condition across the lifespan and treatment modality. It was not possible as a research project to understand each and every disease condition which has been catered uh, by the primary healthcare facility. So what we tried is we tried to restrict uh, uh, the questions to common diseases, uh, especially around NCDs, so cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, uh, diabetes. And, and then we, we tried to see if uh, the team was working as a group uh, in a collaborative manner Within, uh, within within this particular diseases. So these diseases are not exhaustive. So these are only a sample just to indicate uh, whether uh, the comprehensiveness was existing, whether the collaboration was existing. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see, is there another question here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, let me just read it, uh, it's quite long. Primary healthcare, rudely stating or stated, is an embedded system of care. Given the constraints of the supply chain, adequate numbers of competent human resources, comprehensive primary healthcare may, for all reasons, be confined to documents. The investment is orientated to strengthening tertiary care with suboptimal secondary care persisting and unattended to. Okay, so what policy and strategy can address the status? So I think the question is basically saying is that there's a sort of systematic neglect of primary health care. Um, how do we address that in policy and strategy? I'm not sure, Ileana, if that's something you can answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mash. Uh, uh, Dr. Mash, uh, I, I think in Mexico uh, there are problems with uh, confusion about the concept uh, of primary health care. For example, in the financing uh, estimated, only uh, shows the, the expenditure at the first level of care. And so uh, other levels are not included in this estimate. So uh, uh, the beginning of the problem is the confusion in all uh, sector or level uh, that uh, what primary health care are and a different uh, level that these uh, strategies uh, are uh, included in. I think uh, we have to improve the, the financing in, in all the healthcare system in, in, in three level of care, not only uh, at the first level, uh, uh, thinking and in a a concept very comprehensive of the primary health care. Thank you. So, so Liana, I had a couple of questions, um, and we've still got a minute or two. I, in your description of your primary health care team, you didn't seem to have even mentioned nurses. I mean, whereas nurses, of course, were a big part of the Indian primary health care team. It, or did I miss that? So you, you spoke about doctors, spoke, spoke about about pharmacists and laboratory technicians, but I didn't don't think I saw anything about nurses. So that was my one question. And my second question I was interested in is earlier on, you spoke about Mexico is centralizing its um, governance, whereas I think most countries are decentralizing. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about what's what's going on there? But yeah, so those are my two questions. Yes. Uh... Nurses are important in, in, in the model of, me, of Mexico. Uh, there are uh, the, the basic that quit uh, in Mexico are uh, uh, cons uh, constructed for a doctor, a, a general doctor or a family doctor, and a nurse is uh, always there. In some, in some basis groups, uh, there are a health promoter 
uh, add in this in this group. But NERS is very important uh, in Mexico too. Around the the centralizing policies in Mexico is very important, and uh, I am uh, perhaps I have a, a, a little information about that only that. Uh, there are occurring right now in this in these days in this last uh, uh, in the past uh, weeks and uh, there are uh, 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 policies that uh, the central uh, of the, the federal government try to organize and uh, and give the, all the function and all uh, uh, the activity of, of the system. It is it, very difficult to, uh, to know how they are trying to do. Uh, perhaps another actor may uh, have more information, but this is uh, something that are just uh, occurring in, in this uh, time in Mexico. Great, thanks. So we're going to let you off the hook now and move over to Innocent. Um, so here is Innocent. Innocent is from Uganda um, and he's a family physician uh, in Uganda uh, and he's based at the University of Makerere. Um, I see he's actually pursuing his PhD through the University of Stellenbosch, I, I would have to say, um, just to correct the, the, the blurb here. Um, I know that because I'm supervising. Um, so, <laughs> um, and it, yeah, he's on the executive committee of Prima Famed, which is a, a network of family medicine and primary care in Africa. And he's also involved a bit with the Bezrov uh, Center in Canada. And he's an assistant editor in the African Journal of uh, Primary Healthcare and Family Medicine. So, yes, Innocent, we're very interested to now hear and compare what's happening in Uganda to Mexico and India. Over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Bob, for the introduction, and uh, thank you for making the correction. <laughs> yeah, um, hello all. Um, I am. I will just straight away go to what we what were the findings from uh, the part of the study that happened in Uganda. Uh, we are also uh, focused on addressing the three objectives within the study, and the objective one was basically to look at the policy documents, both national at the national level and at the, at the local or regional level, how well they were addressing PHC, bearing in mind uh, that we were following uh, or were being guided by the primary health care uh, performance initiative conceptual framework. So in, in, in total, we retrieved uh, many documents from the from the repository of the Minister of Health because every policy is available online from the Minister of, of Health website. And we, we, we saved and we, we, we thought that 14 of the, of the documents were actually relevant to primary health care. So in total, we reviewed 14 documents, including uh, two national health policies. Uh, Uganda has had two national health policies since the Almaata and for a long time, there was actually no national health policy. Uh, the first national health policy was, was designed in, in 1999, um, uh, and then which ended in uh, it was it, which ended in 2000, and then the second one has just ended. Uh, but th those two, each policy is always guided by other documents. And when you looked at the head, at the governance and the financing of a PHC. Uh, what was clear is that PHC in Uganda is decentralized. And uh, I think that's the, the, the question Bob was talking about that in Mexico they are decentralizing, but in, in, in many countries it is decentralized. So according to the 1995 constitution of Uganda, healthcare is decentralized, particularly for primary healthcare services, but other services are centralized. Uh, and uh, therefore, PHC is governed under the district uh, administrative system. Uh, but again, the this financing is it and the, is it done at the national health, at the, at, the, at the national level. And um, by policy, what is happening now in Uganda is that 8.4% 8, 8 
of the Ugandan GDP, the gross domestic product, is actually invested in health. And 66% of this is actually it goes to primary health care. Now, one may actually think that primary health care is well funded in Uganda. So when you look at these figures, it, they, they are a bit misleading because 8.4% uh, of a low income country is actually very small money. And in Africa, we are guided by the Abuja declaration, which actually recommends that 15% should be what should be invested in health. So you see, we are just above. Uh, half the mark. And again, with, with that little money, I mean, 66% of it goes to PHC. It's not really, it, when you actually translate to, to PHC investment per capita, it is actually less than $4. Because Uganda is 45 million people, but the money is quite less. And the money which funds uh, health and PHC comes from tax revenues, uh, but you also have a big percentage from development partners like USID. Uh, then out-of-pocket payments, uh, which common it also, which actually happens in in many places. And we also have a few areas where funding is from private uh, health insurance companies, particularly for the corporate class. The, <laughs> normally, the 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 the, the, the social economic. Uh, class doesn't benefit from this, but they are also community-based health insurance um, uh, organizations. But basically, the health insurance is quite on a low scale, and you actually also don't have a policy specific for, uh, a, for national health insurance. Next, please. So when we looked, back, reflecting back on our question, we really wanted to understand how our team was constituted and how are they operating. Uh, and from the, the, the policy documents, it was clear that team composition is based on the level of the health facility. Uh, just by way of appreciating how the primary health care system is organized in Uganda, we have five levels. We have health center one, which is basically the community. It doesn't have a physical structure. Then you have health center two, uh, which caters for about 500 people. Uh, and then uh, we have health center three, uh, which catered for about 5,000. And then you have Health Center uh, 4, which, this is at, at, at the constituency level, county level. Uh, and the Health Center 4 is where the doctor, is the lowest level facility where the doctor can be found. And then you have the general hospital or the district hospital that forms the apex of the primary health care. So ideally, patients should enter the primary health care system via the Health Center 1 and move upwards. But I think that is just what the policy says, but that is not actually what happens. And uh, the other one wanted also to, to understand what are the available PHC workforce competences and what does the policy say about that. And the policy, all of the documents we reviewed, including the human resources for health, first of all, it does not clearly stipulate that this is how the PHC workforce should look like. It only says at the health center one, two, there should be a nurse, at Health Center 3, there should be a clinic officer. At Health Center 4, that's where the doctor should be. And, but you, they, they don't actually, the, the policy doesn't stipulate what kind of training, what kind of competencies uh, such PHC workforce should possess. And actually, enforcement of those competencies is relegated to the professional councils. So if you are a, 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 a doctor, you have to register with the, the medical council is responsible for that. If, if you are a nurse, the nurses and midwives council is responsible for that. So, but the, the, the policy itself doesn't, doesn't say that. And those professional councils are actually by law. And then wanted to see what are the enablers that help these comprehensive, these PHC teams provide a comprehensive primary health care. And the documents, all of the documents stipulate the national, the Uganda national minimum health care package. Uh, and this is uh, a package of essential services, which are, uh, which are supposed to be funded by the government and which should be accessible to every citizen. Uh, and uh, basically, every, uh, in, that is what guides comprehensiveness in the PHC. And, uh, but in, in order to deliver that, because it has both, uh, that package cuts, attempts to cut across the container. It contains services for health promotion, disease prevention, curative services and, uh, and actually goes up to, 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 to rehabilitation. Now, in order to achieve that, most of the policies actually emphasize intersectoral 
all my sector collaborations, taking into consideration uh, the contribution of the other sectors uh, as far as uh, provision of comprehensive PhD services is concerned. Next, please. So, obje for objective two, we actually used the SARA tool, like what you have heard from the other countries. Uh, and we basically surveyed two districts uh, in two different parts of the country. We, we looked in, in one district, Torero district, which is the, on the eastern part of Uganda at the border of Kenya and, and Uganda, and another one at the, at the far west border between Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, we just, just wanted to see if there could be some geographical variations, but also uh, you, you, the two districts, are, I would say, are different ages. One is, is, has, is a new district. So we wanted to see if there are actually any changes. And in the Toronto district, we, look, we surveyed 12 facilities. And then in, in the Burisa district, which is in the west, we, 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 we surveyed 10 districts. Uh, generally, we found that 81%, 81.8%, that is 18 of the, of the 22 facilities surveyed, we are open 24 hours. We wanted to see how accessible are the services. So most of the facilities are actually open for 24 hours. And 17 of them, uh, which, which considered 73.3% were rural. Uh, and it is important to note that um, only seven of the facilities which, was, which, which constituted 31.8% were offering both inpatient and, um, and, uh, and outpatient facilities. Uh, so when you looked at the team composition, the common available staff were the nurses, which Bob was actually asking about, but the nurses were actually at all, all of the levels and in all of the facilities. In other words, so we had the nurses at facility, at, facility, at the health center to the re four and the general hospitals. And the doctors were available at the facility levels where they allowed by policy. So where police allows uh, deployment of doctors that were actually available. That was at health center fours, and the general hospitals. And most of the facilities had community health workers who actually form the linkage between the community and that facility. But what, we, what was important to note that the number of technicians were available in half of the facilities. And, uh, and, and of course, that has a, a serious implication on the diagnostic abilities and readiness of these facilities. And also dispensers were qu quite scarce <laughs> they were present in only 90% of the facilities, only two. So in other words, 20 of the facilities had no dispenser. And when you, that means that the dispensing role was actually being played by the, mainly the nurses and the community health workers. Uh, next slide, please. Now, when we looked at the availability of the basic amenities and the equipment to enable the PHC team to provide comprehensive services, Generally, all of the, the facilities that we are surveyed, 70% had this, more than 70% of the basic amenities and equipment. This, the, and here we looked at, for example, availability of stethoscopes, weighing scales, and the other basic equipment that may be required, and basic amenities like water supply and electricity supply. When you looked at how the teams were functioning, uh, it was clear that there is actually support supervision uh, for the for, for, for the team. And the way it is arranged was that the, a, higher, a higher level facility, the, the, the staff members or the, 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 the people, the, 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 the human resource there, normally has um, periodic visits uh, to the lower level facilities. And this, is a, this happens according to, 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 to the level. So if we have a general hospital, ideally supposed to provide support supervision, the area center four, area center four to area center three, and then to area center two. And this is actually, this is well done because in all of the facilities surveyed, at least there was a support supervision visit in, in the last three months. But what was also noted from that, from that survey was that when this support supervision happens, ideally it should focus on developing the competence of clinical staff, but which was being less emphasized. So what, would, what was commonly done was actually looking at the data and, 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 the, and the drugs. So, I, I, and I think that, that was a gap that was clear. And then when you look at the availability of comprehensiveness, comprehensive services, all of the facilities surveyed provide outpatient services. And a significant number also provides inpatient services. Next slide, please. 
Now, when we looked at the readiness, and here the readiness was measured by uh, looking at the readiness of these facilities to provide care for cardiovascular diseases and, and hypertension. And, and basically the, 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 the reasoning behind this was that it's not quite common to have the care for evidence shows that there is the, the, the care for cardiovascular disease and, and hypertension is actually less. And we had thought that if one used this as a proxy measure, then one would actually somehow assess how comprehensive the services were. So we looked at the availability of staff that we are dedicated to cardiovascular disease care and, 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 and management, availability of guidelines and treatment algorithms for cardiovascular disease, and the availability of diagnostics, and also presence of community initiatives to support cardiovascular disease and hypertension. And actually, what generally they were less available in these facilities, meaning that the readiness for provision of comprehensive primary health care services is actually is, is somehow less. Next slide, please. So we also conducted in-depth in interviews with the stakeholders and the primary health care providers in the facilities to understand how the teams are constituted and, and how they were functioning. And again, like what, uh, what was done in the other sites, we used the same approach to try and see what were the barriers and the facilitators at the different levels. And uh, at the higher level or the macro level, basically there is less low, low funding for PHC at the, at, 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 the, at, at the national level. We actually don't have a task shifting policy. And you remember we said, for example, we don't have laboratory technicians, I mean, there are, are few, the dispensers are not there, but yet there is no policy. So within the, 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 the team, they have to figure out how to, how to work it out those roles. And then there were no payment for community health workers. Community health workers actually work on a voluntary basis. And we also did not, the, the policy, the, 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 we didn't find that there were no policies that would guide human resource development. And again, prior, prioritization of vertical programs was quite evident from the interviews. And the systems actually do not have resilience, particularly in the face of epidemics. And then we actually did this work during the COVID, uh, the COVID era. So that one quite stood out clearly. And the facilitators were actually the support supervision that is got from the higher facilities. And then we have, uh, there is radio availability of national clinical guidelines that guide the provision of services and also support from development partners. When you looked at the MISO level, the, the, the barrier common is that the communities served are not defined. So the, the facilities just provide the services and people move from anywhere and come. Then you, there were also weak community linkages, institutional of bureaucracies, bureaucracies and poor equipped facilities and the poor coordination with the PHC systems. Uh, and again, frequent drugs and, and the medical supply stockouts was also another barrier. And then in terms of what was facilitating the team performance was actually availability of recognition uh, of re mechanism to recognize the performance at facility level. And this creates motivation among the staff and then also a mentorship uh, opportunities from the available senior staff and then also regular meetings within the facilities, which promoted, which promoted the coordination during the provision of services. Then at the macro level, real staffing levels were low, and then human resource planning and deployment was not driven by facility needs. Uh, and then staff training also was not meeting the needs of facilities. There were also high attrition rates. But what was facilitating the team performance was actually the individual ambition driving the performance. I think this was arising from uh, internal motivation, which was actually clear for most of the people interviewed. And then there was also continuous professional development activities. This happened almost in every facility and it helps the team to improve themselves. And then interpersonal relationships that actually happens through the demonstrated teamwork uh, from, from the, 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 the members providing the PHC team. Thank you very much. Thanks, Innocent. Now, I, I'm aware that we, we haven't, we've got about, what, 15 or so minutes left. But I, before we move on to having a word from, from, from Victor, um, I wondered if you can, each of you, very briefly answer this question. So um, if you think about the implications of your work, you know, what, what is the take-home message 
you know, in terms of, okay, you've done you've, all these findings that you've presented, but can you think, can you give us one take home message about what you found and, and the sort of implications for the primary healthcare system? And just one would be, and then we just get, give us the highlight. Um, so Innocent, we'll start with you, seeing as um, you haven't answered any questions yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I think what, I, what the take home from, 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 from here is that basically i for me i would think that what we have shows that we need uh, we need to generate more evidence for primary health care because for example on the surface of it you actually for example on the ugandan part you actually feel that phc is actually being well i mean the phc services are being well provided but actually the reality is different and so i i, I and the implication would be really we should use this the findings that we have to advocate more for prioritization of PH of primary health care and also more funding and investment. Thanks, Innocent. Um, let, who should we go to next? Let's go backwards in order. Uh, Eliana. Thank you, Dr. Marsh. I, I think in Mexico, the principal uh, fund in this study is uh, the poor uh, recognition of the uh, the concept of the primary comprehensive primary health care in all levels, in all uh, kind of actors. This is a key element uh, to, to improve the policies in the country uh, to strengthen the primary health care. I, I think this is the more important. And uh, the limited implementation of several models of care. Each uh, six period of government uh, create a new model, a new name of model, but a limited implementation of this care model. You have to, to guarantee to the continuity of uh, transactional uh, periods. Thank you. Thank you. And Renu, what's your take home message? Yeah, my take home message would be that uh, the National Health Policy 2017 Aishman Bharat program, they have tremendous potential to transform the primary health care system in India. But it's all there in concept and we are in the process of implementation. What we require is uh, a, a competent and a happy PHC workforce, a well-trained workforce. So we need more pro uh, PHC workforce policies, um, more uh, uh, what do you say, uh, you know, address the shortage of skilled workforce is, I think that is what will drive, uh, you know, the comprehensive primary health. Thank you. Okay, so now in the last 10 minutes or so, we're going to um, have a, a, another guest speaker give us his reflections um, on this topic. Uh, and, and Dr. Victor Alberto is, um, as you can see, a medical doctor. He has a PhD. Um, and he's, got, he's been very important, it looks like, in, in Mexico. <laughs> he's the, been the Director of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at the School of Public Health, Director of the National Center for Environmental Health, Coordinator of Epidemiological Surveillance, Head of Primary Healthcare, and Medical Director of the Mexican Social Security Institute. Um, and he's published a lot um, and he's clearly passionate about transforming things in Mexico. So, Victor, over to you uh, for your reflections on all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and thank you, all of you, for inviting me, and uh, Innocent Renu, uh, Renu and Ileana, for letting me uh, provide some uh, reflections of what uh, of the results of, the, of this study. Um, I think you achieved the objectives of this, of this story in reviewing the national and subnational policies of primary health care, team composition and organization, and expected uh, comprehensiveness of primary health care, and the description of the composition and organization of the primary health care team, and the comprehensiveness of the uh, uh, care provided by, the, by these teams. Um, but as a researcher, not only as a researcher, but as a policymaker, I've been dealing with primary health care in Mexico for about 10 years. And um, we have faced some problems. And uh, 
in implementing primary health care and from the results you provide us, I think it's a good picture of, of what is going on in these three countries in, in terms of the uh, composition of, of primary health care teams. But there is more, we need to know more about the, the, uh, these primary health care teams to understand how the, if we are having the optimal uh, workforce for uh, the implementation of primary health care in, this, in these three countries. Um, you first review the uh, documents on, on the policy of primary health care. And, that, and that's fine. I, I think that's the first thing we, we need to do. But uh, as one of the comments uh, in the, uh, this web webinar was uh, done is, is it only the uh, the policy stated in documents, or is it has it gone to the ground and provided to the population? That's the, the key, key question. And uh, in, in Mexico, we have been dealing with very good documents and very good intentions for many years, but uh, that's not enough. Uh, what is the uh, how are we, are we providing healthcare in the ground to the population? Are we and one of the problems is that sometimes we have very good documents, but the, uh, not everybody understands what is in the documents. Uh, and as Liliana said, in Mexico, we had a, a poor concept of uh, primary health, the comprehensive primary health care uh, strategy. Uh, and uh, in, in, I've seen that uh, in, in these two countries, and, also, the, the, there is a different focus on how the, you research or search for the primary health care team. In Uganda, uh, Innocent uh, gave us the results of, of different uh, health centers, including hospitals. In Mexico, it was only the first level of care. And uh, I'm not sure how this compares to what was uh, reported in India. And, uh, the, uh, we have very good documents from your organization, Bob, and, 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 and from the Warfare Organization about the, the concept of primary, comprehensive primary health care. But it's difficult uh, for uh, policymakers and for physicians and public health workers uh, to understand how is the, what the uh, concept of comprehensive comprehensiveness of, of health care. Um, is it related to uh, only to the uh, from prevention to uh, rehabilitation, all, all this process? Or, or does it deal with uh, all, how we deal with public health, primary health care and public health? That's, that's um, those, do our model incorporate everything, uh, public health uh, interventions and um, primary health care, um, and how accessible are the, uh, to the population, and is this people center? Um, what what I, I've seen from the results is that the, um, the focus of the SARA interview was on the, uh, what is established in the center, but not the needs of the population. And, and it's, is, is it, was this uh, team, was this workforce enough to satisfy the, the needs of the, of the population? That was not stated. It, it was only in, investigated if the, there was a doctor and a nurse and the, and the care they can provide. But is, is that enough for the population? And, and there is also a need to, to understand how the, uh, this network or if the referral system is, is enough and coordinated, uh, how the, uh, the team works with, with the, uh, from the primary health care center to the hospital. And uh, we go to the next slide, please. Um, if we want to know the primary health care workforce, we need to, to know the, uh, if the quantity is enough to, to satisfy the uh, the population needs, and also the competency levels. And 
you did a very good job in the competency levels, but uh, the adequacy of the quantity of, of the teams, I, I think we need to go to the, go refer that to the population. And, and not only if, if that is enough in the established uh, primary healthcare center. If we go to the next slide. Next slide. And, um, I, I've been working in, in this in, in, in Mexico in uh, in one of the uh, segments of the uh, segmented model uh, that uh, Ileana mentioned. I, I've been working more with the formal workforce um, in in Mexico in the National Institute of uh, yeah, it was I wasn't say public health, but that was my past year uh, about uh, twenty years ago. No, yeah, at IMSS, the Instituto Mexicano del Seguro Social. And I, I've seen um, the, uh, one of the problems that we have faced in implementing uh, primary uh, comprehensive healthcare is the uh, empanelment. Uh, the, to assign a, a defined population to one, each one of the teams. Uh, and that's, that has been a problem, especially the size of the panel. We have had very nice, uh, well-formulated teams uh, lead by a doctor, a, new, a group of uh, nurses and community workers in one of the other uh, segments. But the size of the, of the panel has been too big. So that the, uh, at the end, uh, the uh, doctor is focused on disease and not prevention because the size of this panel, panel is, is too big. And I, I, I would like to see the size of the panel in this, this, these three countries for each one of the teams. And uh, in, 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 uh, at, at in uh, IMSS, we have like 3,500 uh, persons per doctor or per team. And uh, in Cuba, they have oh, 1,000 per, per team. And in Spain, it's, it's similar to that. So that the, uh, the, the achievements that they have could do with that size of the panel, it's, it's very difficult because they have so many, many people to attend that even the, if they have all, all the structure and uh, medicines and other supplies in, in place, that's not enough. And, and the continuation of care is difficult because uh, uh, they, they are, reacting more to disease than and prevention or, or, or dealing with a continuity of care. And there is also, when we go and, and, and test, uh, because we have an, uh, an abundant uh, uh, teaching and, um, and courses for the workforce, but if you go, go on uh, and uh, test, the knowledge of the uh, of the team that it's very good they get 100 percent of in in all the tests but the practice is different there is a dissociation of knowledge knowledge and practice because of the context how they are working and 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 the uh, actual services they can provide in the timing the for the people they 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 need to to care and the uh, there is a, a, a I said that the composition of the team is, is, is very good, but they don't work as a, a, as a team. They work, the, uh, the nurse uh, is in charge of preventive services and the doctor is in charge of uh, disease oriented consultations. And they, they don't work together as a team. The, 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 sometimes there is one nurse and one doctor, each one, uh, uh, they, they are next door and they have a, a very nice office, uh, the nurse and, and, and the doctor, but they, they have different objectives uh, and, and they don't share the information. Um, that's one of the problems, to work as a team in the, in the field. Um, that's, those are some of the comments I wanted to, to do in, with this uh, information. Thank you, Dot, uh, Bob, and, and, and the team for letting me uh, share my experience. Great. Thank you very much. Um, 
now I think I am aware that we're basically our time is up. So um, can I hand back then to you, Manushi? I guess we have to finish now. Can yes. can you? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I uh, thank you every thank you to all the speakers who participated. I know it's early morning in Mexico and uh, late evening in India, so uh, thank you for this webinar. And um, so we know you must be having more questions. I encourage you to share with them, share your questions with us over email or uh, via Twitter. You can engage with us. Um, other than that, if you have any concerns or questions, um, I will share uh, based on the participant list. I will share the presentation materials with you and the related publications. Um, on that note, yes, thank you. Thank okay. you. Thanks for, thank you very much. I think we shall end there. Many thanks to all the speakers and presenters. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Marsh. Thank you. Thank you, Manucci, David. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Anna. Thanks.